Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. This is Wednesday. It's our live audience Wednesday. You can see them already. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. I am Tokpe Mark Odige. And with me, as usual, are the beautiful ladies of your view. I get in the building. Jo, Jo, Jo. Jo, good morning, good morning. Good morning, audience. Good morning. You're yeah, welcome. Okay, you're looking so beautiful today. Thank you. I wasn't trying just, to evade our conversation because I was really just admiring how beautiful you were. Justina looking. did my makeup. Thank you, Justina. Everybody has said yes. I look nice tonight. Really, today. Really so, nice. um, thank you, Justina. And your bling bling dashiki. Oh, I, you know, I don't remember where I got this dashiki from. And everybody's ah. saying oh, they like it. And really I don't remember. Because if, if I remember, I'll go and do another one. <laughs> <laughs> so, if the person is watching you, university should reach out to you. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yes. So, I, I, um, I wanted to talk about um, the our Alausa police station. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some fine police officers there. What fine really? ladies. If you see the DPO, wow, it's female. Oh, if you see the okay, DPO, you me. if you see how she sets, <laughs> why? <laughs> She's endowed. Ah, oh, sure from, from heaven straight. <laughs> hey, 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 what people pay for. Hey, if you see this lady, hmm. when she wore a uniform, I just say, Madam, you are sex, you. She say, and I don't have sex, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, yesterday, I saw another one. That one is ASP. I say, ah, this police station, in fact, I have to talk about you on the show tomorrow. <laughs> OK. It's an endowed That's police station. Why, endowed police station. All right. Oh, <laughs> you are looking for a wife. Go there. Oh, that is single. <laughs> okay, seriously. <laughs> We are doing, rocking this our natural hair again. Yes, so what's, what's We're loving I do? you. We're loving you. <laughs> Thank you. I bet clap for her, darling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, just um, a few months after I joined the show, I set up a book club. Okay. Because yeah. I wanted people to, you know, be able to develop themselves. It's not just enough for you to have a university degree and leave it there. You need to read Make more because I hear pages. readers are leaders. Abby. And so we started on the 22nd of June and we are past one year already. And I decided mm -hmm. to have a get together, physical get together Yay. in Lagos on the 28th, which is on Saturday here. Mm -hmm. So um, it's still open to people who want to join. We read online, we read on Telegram. You just subscribe, you be a part of it so we can rub minds, see how we help ourselves grow. Because the law of the universe states that you either grow or die. Again. Mm -hmm. So we must grow. We must grow. You are chosen to grow. <laughs> <laughs> you see, hey, it's giving you more sense. Jesus. <laughs> May I just quickly oh, announce on um, live TV that I love Obiadulu's hair. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm going to be loving her this week. We used to clutch you. She's a very stubborn somebody. See who's like you. Is. See who's talking. <laughs> People always assume you guys, you, I only hear from both of you that I'm stubborn, actually. Mm. I'm serious. Mm. It's oh, only wow. from the two of you. Oh, so wow. that means we, I don't, we don't align. Mm. Mm. But it's uh, my ballet, Okolu, one. And only Aki of TVC. Uh -huh. Our studio manager, today is his birthday. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that I come here, cannot come and take my house. Happy birthday. Happy yeah. birthday. As he used to tell Bale, oh yeah, the money. His, his valuation is coming very soon. But yes. it was for last place birthday yesterday as well, and I wasn't around. Happy birthday for last place. Did Fala. I see him? Yes. You know, actually, years. I wanted to mention it yesterday, yeah, about Fala, but then Obiadjuli just destabilized me with this. Uh, <laughs> the hair looked good. I saw her Fantastic. pictures. I just loved every one of them. And then she sent me a frog. And my son was wondering why there's a frog on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. But we would like to, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very good. I'm, I'm enjoying everyday life and I'm enjoying self-growth. You know, this, mm -hmm. this journey of just managing yourself and seeing small differences and appreciating the small little things that are better about your life. And YK, no comment about my hair. You will see what no, I will no, do I'm, next week. No, I'm not commenting. Let <laughs> me comment about your hair. If I comment about your hair, we will be here till tomorrow morning. So let me just leave your hair. I just wanted to quickly just my grandson. Mm. Well, I, I, I did the video um, film of our dancers, mm. and then my, my nephew sent it to my daughter, and she showed her, my grandson. That's why I started crying that she shouldn't switch off the video. Hey, he wants to be looking grandma? at women. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably seeing you there. I, I wasn't in the thing. video now. Oh. He's a boy. He's a boy. Ah, he's attracted he's to a boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. We <laughs> 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 like to appreciate every legend for the small jobs. Guys, please a round of applause for you. I like the legend. 
and print slices for our cake and TBA services, the distributors of rights food for water and drinks. You know, every last Wednesday we get food, we get drinks. Thank you guys, we appreciate you all. When we return, we'll look at the top stories in the newspaper. Stay with us, we'll be right back. for staying with us. We'll be starting off the newspaper review with the punch. Major headline, as we've been following the story, $9.6 billion judgment, PNID case is a scam, says Buhari at the UN. Malami leads EFCC lawyer Oyedepo Kole, Kole Osho and five others. Obasanjo behind my impeachment over his third term bid, that's from Ladoja. No refund for federal roads repair, federal government tells governors. <clears throat> Why we shut nine mechanic villages in Ogun? Woman flees as sex sexagenarian dies. Oh my goodness. Woman flees after sexagenarian lover dies during sex. Wow. Hmm. Anti Ambode protesters storm assembly, demand ex governors probe. Sack Buhari over educational qualifications, PDP tells the Supreme Court, and federal government denies um, Guinness, Dangote, 13 others, tax relief. So what story are we taking? I think I have to take this extraordinary story. <laughs> I, I, I read the story, I was just I laughing. I read it too. <laughs> <laughs> they, they checked into a hotel. Uh, what was the name of that hotel again? Royal something. In, How old was the man? Um, Gass he was in his 60s. 60s. Um, Gassikia College Road, I forgot the name of the hotel, but... They checked into the hotel, and they have been coming there. It's been a regular, yeah, regular so <laughs> <laughs> they checked 8 a.m. The manager, Ezekiel, went for morning devotion. Mm -hmm. They went for morning romp. <laughs> so suddenly, the cleaner now saw the woman ah, picking race. And they, ah, why is this woman picking race? So he went to go and meet the manager in morning devotion. Okay? So come and see your customer. Your customer is running away from. So they went to the room. Catching the woman. Uh, <laughs> when they got to the room, they saw that the man naked. Hmm. <laughs> was, to as had gone to the greater beyond. <laughs> the, the tissue that they had used for <laughs> was all on the floor. So now the police first arrested the manager. Now they've released him. Pay okay. What it's is not your fault. To go? So what there is, is a manhunt looking for the woman. Hmm. But, uh, <laughs> but they should just first do post mortem to see uh, just to see whether it was heart attack. Yes. Mm. So Most likely. Now, was the man married? Is that why he went to we hotel? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we are not in the story. See, maybe it's a quick it's sad way to go. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, and sad case. Yes. No, 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 no. Is that a sad way to go? It depends. Ah, it, depends. Depends. No, it depends on if you reach right. the like glory. Like it depends That's on the hand if you you're reach the glory. Hey, it's not a hey, sad way to go now. Ah, he came and he went. <laughs> ah, YK, it's a breakfast show, please. <laughs> Please, Waiki. Amber Day protesters. Yes, Amber Day protesters. Yes, so uh, they were at the State House of Assembly mm -hmm. yesterday protesting um, mm -hmm. about Amber Day, saying that um, he should be probed, mm -hmm. that um, he mismanaged the uh, funds. He was able. He was not able to um, align properly with the government past that house. That um, all the he, in fact, he left a, a what was it called? A mine. I want to get that exactly because he said, hey, he, he left a mind, a land mine for his successor. He was able to, he didn't hand over properly. And so the successor is struggling, not, you know, having that blueprint on how to so run. So protesters the that yes, went to, protesters. The to the assembly. Yes, to the state house say assembly. that he no, must be probed. They are not going to let it go just like that. I hope so. that they're just not sponsored because <laughs> I would expect the House of Assembly to continue Look into whatever they, the investigation is. Anything. Moving on to the Daily Sun, major headline, 2019 presidency. <laughs> Article gives Supreme Court 66 reasons to sack Buhari. Six nullification of tribunal's judgment. APC, they are on their way to final destruction. And you can't miss the picture. Um, there are two pictures, actually. One, Alliance of Nigerians in, Niger in America, 
demonstrates in support of President Muhammad Buhari's administration in front of the Nigeria House in New York. And another picture is showing demonstrators in support of Omoyele Shore in front of the Nigeria House in New York yesterday. And his wife was also part of the um, demonstrators asking for the release of um, Shore. Can you take uh, Shore's story? Yeah. Let me quickly finish reading the story. Um, Buhari reports UK firm PNID to UN. Um, court orders release of Sewore, rejects extension of detention, wife others protest in New York. Early passage of 2020 budget in jeopardy as Lawan recants, says Senate not in possession of the MTEF. Um, and Sar Saraki says, I duly retired all allocations while in office. So. Okay, so uh, early Sewore was yesterday, um, his release was ordered by the court yesterday following the withdrawal of a, an extension application that was brought by the DSS lawyer. Mm -hmm. And um, the court has ordered that he be released, simple. We're hoping that, of course, that they um, comply. comply with this order again, so we don't have a Dasuki on our hands. Yeah. Ah, is yeah, this only so Dasuki? What of uh, the yeah. IMNF guy? Mm -hmm. No, but I, I, I want to believe that they will. Because I understand that the, their lawyers had already filed for an extension and they had to withdraw that extension. Based on that withdrawal, mm -hmm. the court didn't see any need to further, you know, um, hold on to him. But they've asked that he leaves his uh, passport with the, yes. uh, with the court. They, they, uh, they, they, the they, lawyer, yes. to his yes. lawyer. Yes. So, yes. so they should do the needful and release him. That's mm -hmm. all. That's what we expect. I think government is already thinking about the consequences. Quick one on the story of um, Saraki. Yesterday, mm. we took the story of Saraki and the running costs of mm -hmm. 73 billion naira. And Saraki's spokesperson um, replied the paper saying that um, daily trust mis misquoted and was malicious in the way they framed the comments, mm -hmm. making it look like mm -hmm. they didn't retire, that everything, that every cost they um, expended was retired <coughs> and they have a certificate of retirement. Mm -hmm. Retirement yes, in government simply means that they gave you one billion naira, you spent the one billion naira and you mm -hmm. have a receipt mm -hmm. showing what you spent, you spent it, it on and you sent it back to them. So that's what they say, that this 75.3 billion naira that they say they spent was actually retired in that they spent it and they sent the receipts back. So, mm. moving on to the Tribune. 5, not 75.3. 73.5. Thank you, Weki. Moving on to the Nigerian Tribune. Major headline. At UN, Buhari says Nigeria won't allow PNID scam. Says social media won't, shouldn't be allowed to cause chaos in the world. Mm. And Senate invites Malami, petrol, Petroleum Ministries officials. Mm. And in other news, we have Atiku, PDP, appeal tribunal judgment, insist Buhari isn't qualified to contest. I retired running cost as Senate president before leaving office, that's from Saraki. Um, Makinde committed to coalition arrangements, that's from Ladoja. We are not aware of Oshibajo's travails, <coughs> that's from the Senate. The Senate um, and we have a minor cabinet reshuffle. President Muhammadu Bari moves Kiyamo to the Ministry of Labor and Employment. So, what are we taking? They allow Shadura to take over from him. Both yes. ministers for state. The Senate mm. saying that um, they don't have any, they are not aware of any um, alleged power play between the vice presidency and the president. You know, we had more like a, a rumor last week that um, the vice president, the president had taken away certain orders or certain powers oh, from so. the vice president. So the Senate is saying that it's not their business. The president has the exclusive right to run the executive the way he wants to. Yeah. The only thing that they will bother them if they are, his constitutional powers are being withdrawn from him and so far so good mm -hmm. nothing like that has happened. So, so we, we also have the story of the reshuffle, cabinet mm -hmm. reshuffle. Yes, so yesterday the Minister for State for, for Niger Delta was removed and moved to Labour and Employment Redeployed, as yeah. Minister for State and the Minister for State for Labour and Employment is to replace him at the Niger Delta. I think it calls for balance because you see, Ondo is also very strong oil producing state mm. and they don't have a representation. If you have two from the core Niger Delta, the South South states in the uh, Ministry that's, of that's Niger you Delta. Speculating what no, no, have cost that's me explaining what you how felt. the round peg is finally fitting into a round What home. you felt oh. is the round <laughs> peg. Yes, like people saying that there's been, there was, yeah, so, uh, was an a expected clash between the yeah. two ministers under the Niger Delta when he was in Niger Delta ministry. Aside that, I think this fits well. I just feel that, you know, they're not utilizing the personality of Kiamo well mm. under, this, right uh, under this executive, I think so. Mm. Moving on to The Guardian, major headline, why 2020 budget may suffer delay? Um, and another news, Scott rejects DSS request and others release of Soare um, will leave no stone unturned in tackling graft, Buhari declares at UN. 
Senate summons Malami, ministry officials, others over $9.6 billion judgment debt. PDP article appeals tribunals ruling at Supreme Court, cautions against elevation of judges, and Kiamu redeployed to Labor Ministry, swaps post with Alashua Adura. And um, I think that's all we can take. Um, uh, moving on to the Vanguard. That's our final paper for today. I'll just read the headlines. PNID, PNID $9.6 billion award scam to fleece Nigeria and 2020 budget Senate fears set back. So somebody wants to take the story of 2020 so, budget. Yeah, the 2023 budget, the, the President Senate is saying that because they failed to, re to receive the medium term expenditure framework, that's the MTEF, and the fiscal strategy paper, FSP, from the President, they are afraid that there might be a little setback and they might not be able to meet the January one date, which is, of course, the target for this um, 2020 budget. Quick one. Boko Haram is occupying eight local governments in Borno. Yes, yeah, so um, the Borno state um, government is complaining that about out of um, 10 of the local governments in that area, eight is occupied by Boko Haram. Mm. In addition, out the, of 10. Yes, out of 10. So, in addition, the chief of staff just finished having a meeting with um, um, the presidency and they've come up with plans to rejig the security issues in the country. They are insisting that they want to start properly investigating non-governmental organizations, saying that there's, a, there, there, there's a, an intelligence that they are working hand in hand with Boko Haram terrorists. Well. So I just hope they look well, into it um, properly. I just they, they, they said they were winning the war against insurgency. Uh, and yeah. and uh, the, the, the House of Reps, they called the um, I, A, IG and the um, oh, and Bura type, Chief of Army Staff, and both of them did not sure. attend the meetings. And uh, Femi Bajamila was very upset. He was going to report he, to the president. Yes, yeah, he says he's going to report to mm. the president. This was yesterday in the yeah. papers yesterday. Mm. And now we read now this today. Now we're saying that there are eight mm -hmm. local governments. Our heart goes out to in Borno. May God keep protecting them. Mm -hmm. you know. um, that's what we can take from newspaper review today. Next, we'll have a guest appearance from PZ. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. <clears throat> Thanks for staying with us. For many years, Cousins Baby has provided complete baby care solutions for Nigerian moms and the skin care needed needs suited to their baby, building a strong and reliable reputation over time and in the process becoming a household name. Joining us on the show is the brand development and activation manager, PZ Cousins, Oluwa Busayo John. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay. I like how you didn't shorten your name. So it's like I have to call your entire name. Yes, Oluwa you Proudly Nigerian. Yes. All right. So um, I wanted to ask you, I know you're here to discuss the Cousins Baby Moment. It's a competition. Can you tell us more about that? Mm -hmm. OK, so the Cousins Baby Moments competition, it's a baby of the year competition. Um, we put this together as a brand to celebrate babies and their families. Uh, like you said, Cousins Baby has been around for a while, and we've been providing um, family care solutions to um, to mothers and to their families. So what we wanted to do was to connect with these families and celebrate them. And that's why we thought of the Cousins Baby Moments competition. So it's a Baby of the Year competition and at the end of it all, a winner goes home with a grand prize. Wow, fantastic. So, so I know that um, you've done several, you've had several editions. Mm -hmm. yes. So is there anything that's going to make this year's edition different from the rest you've done? Mm -hmm. All right, so the Cousins Baby Moments competition started um, as far back as 2013. So we've had five editions so far. and. Um, one of the things that came through to us is we received a lot of feedbacks over the years as we were running this competition. So we took a step back and we decided that we wanted to, you know, review and make the experience a little bit better and more rewarding okay. for the participants of the competition. So we took a break last year and said, okay, season six, we want it to be bigger and much better. So there are a number of changes that we have made. One of the changes is that this year, the call to entry period will run for five weeks. And every week, we're going to be selecting 200 babies. Hmm. Now, 
the twist this year is that participants are going to be allowed multiple entries. Now, should for any reason your baby not be selected in a particular week of entry, you are allowed to get a little bit more creative mm. and then submit a photo again, again. for your baby, mm. you know, for so, that period. So how do we enter for the competition? <coughs> what exactly? What's the format? Online application, or what, how do, what exactly are they supposed to do with the pictures? All right, so oh. the, the competition is primarily online, it's um, mostly on digital media. So, if you are going to enter for the Cousins Baby Moments competition, it's very simple. So, you just buy a Cousins Baby gift pack oh, or okay. any three Cousins Baby products um, within our range, and then you visit our website that is cousinsbaby.com.ng. Mm -hmm. And when you visit our website, you it takes you to the photo uploader app where you can upload a photo of, the, of your baby. Now, the g products must be in clear view, of course, within the frame <laughs> mm -hmm. of, know, the picture of, of the, the picture of the baby. And when the, you, can, you can upload that on our website and then... Yeah, yeah, I heard your partner of the babies. What age, age range is it? Zero to two years. Oh, okay. really? So you, I know you have judges, right? Um, who are the judges for this year and why did you pick them? All right, so uh, the judges for this year are Deyemi Okonawan, mm -hmm. um, Ufama McDermott, and Sisi Yemi. Uh, over the years, like I said, we wanted to make the experience a little bit better and deeper for our consumers. So it was a total refresh mm -hmm. of the mechanics for, um, for the period. And while we've had really amazing judges, over the last five years, we said that if we're going to come back bigger and better, what else is going to change for our consumers? What would they see? And that was what led to the selection of the um, former and um, CCME. Now, these three people were not just selected randomly. They fit into the family perspective. So these yeah. are individuals mm -hmm. that are very family oriented. Mm -hmm. You see them share, you know, a lot of memories with their family and their children. They are also very successful in their various careers and they are very appealing to our target consumer. So we took our time to look at that and then decided, okay, if we're going to change our who else fits into the same. Um, so yeah. this is not the first um, um, competition for babies that you've had. What's the journey been like and how has the response been like? It's been really interesting. Now when we, start, when we started out in 2013, we were really hopeful. And for us it was about bringing alive our brand promise to the consumers and engaging them and ensuring that we're on the same track with them and you know we're engaging them the right way. And when we started in 2013, we had little below a thousand entries Whoa. over the five years that we've been at the time we we're doing our fifth anniversary edition we had had over four thousand entries okay. into mm. the competition so this is a signal that we are doing something right Fantastic. And that it, how, exactly consumers are connecting with, with us that amount of babies how what's the elimination process mm -hmm. how difficult or easy is it for you guys to eliminate? All right. So I mentioned earlier that the um, competition mechanics we went back and made it a little bit deeper and mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. rewarding and more engaging what we've done this year is to make the voting process simpler okay. and seamless okay. for our consumers. So it's a very transparent process now. And for the first time, we're going to be hosting it on an independent server. Okay. So we want to try and eliminate, so it's eliminate easier any for form of exactly vote. Vote, mm. eliminate any form of foul play. Now, I said earlier that 200 babies will be selected weekly. Mm. So we're going to have 1,000 babies at the end of a five week call to entry period. Okay. Then the app will be open to public voting. Public Ooh, voting is okay. going to be for a two-week period. Okay. Ooh, then the okay. top 50 votes, top 50 votes with um, highest votes with um, the highest genuine votes rather, would be selected. So the voting process is going to go from the top 1,000 to the top 50. After which our judges will then step in and select. That's good. Something. Sounds like a lot of thought has been put yeah, into this process. Been, I'm looking forward to seeing what would turn out like. Um, is there any other information you'd like to share with us? Definitely. I just want to encourage participants to mm -hmm. enter on time because entries are closing very soon. It's October, already ongoing. Yes, it's ongoing right now. So oh. entries are going well, to be closing. When do the entries end? October 19th. Oh, okay. So if you have, do you have anybody yeah. with babies here? Less than two? Two years. Do you and have a baby less than two? Have you entered for the cousins? Okay, so you need so to do that right, right now. <laughs> and yes. if you want more information in whatever way, you can follow our social media handles mm -hmm. at Cousins Baby NG on Facebook or on Instagram. You can also visit our website, CousinsBaby.com.ng. All the information you need will be there. We look forward to seeing the beautiful babies mm -hmm. and sharing those magic memories with okay. you. I can get I pregnant want to now. I <laughs> baby. I've, I've cited yeah. you, so let me know. Pregnant. I baby. can get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> We'll go on a quick break. If you need more information, just follow their social media handle, and I'm sure you'll get all the details and reach out to people to vote for you. And I hope you get to win. 
Definitely. you know. <laughs> we'll go on a break. When we return, we'll discuss our lineup of hot topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. I'm sure we've all heard different stories of how foreigners have been given preferential mm -hmm. treatment in Nigeria. On Twitter, a user um, recently narrated how a foreign student was given preferential treatment at a primary school. So we're asking you, do we value Ni foreigners more than Nigerians in this country? I would like you to call in and join the conversation. Share stories of your personal experience on 070-8066-8014. Or you could tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag your view, so we could hear from you. So I know that you cannot have lived here and you will not have <coughs> encountered one experience. Why, Kay, I'm starting with you. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you say, hmm? <laughs> hmm? No, I, I want all of you to say, then I want to explain to you why. Because, yeah. yes, I have encountered several experiences. <clears throat> I mean, but there is no point in me discussing my experiences without telling you the reason for this. For it. Okay, you so know, so you guys talk about your experiences. You know, me, me I must have experience because I'm 58. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I'm waiting. Who is going yeah, yeah, for yeah. Jump so, at it uh, now. OK, for me, it was my uh, church. Your uh, church? Yes, I grew up in an American church. And then I see the way Nigerians who attended the same church revered the white people. Yes, we have the churches all over Lagos. I don't want to mention it. They revered you as in, they see them as gods, as lords, and anything they say, all correct, you know? But then when the, let's take for instance, we have, because we don't call them pastors, we call them presidents. So let's say uh, the white man is out and decides to go back to his country. Most of them come from Utah, go back to their country, and then a black man becomes president. You don't see the same loyalty that they've given to the same respect that they've given to the white man, you don't see it there. Mm. And, you know, I've worked with people, I've worked with the Lebanese, I've worked with uh, a bit with the Indians, and I see how, you know, we as a people, we, we I, I think we just have a problem. Let me use that word because it's not even the pure white, oh, whether it's Lebanese, whether it's Chinese, whether it's India, the fact that their skin color is different, you see how Nigerians just lose themselves and put them on a sort of pedestal that they are better, so they to also speak. because they are richer? No, that's not the point. I would have once gone that way, but that's not the point. For me, I see it as a deep-seated inferiority complex that is transcending generations. Mm -hmm. So we see even our children now recognize that when they see white people, they seem better than them already. We, we, without you talking to your child, they just have that complex already. So it's something that has been embedded in us through, I don't want to go very deep this morning. Subconscious. I'm trying to be a good girl. wants to find trouble on this topic. That's why I post. So the people who showed me that some foreigners are better than me are government in my own place. Mm. So I live among the tank farms, largely owned by foreigners, mainly Indians, Asians. And even the company in front of my house making dough, writing made in China there, it's making it in front of my house. And they call it made in China? Using paints, hmm. you know, abusing my environment. I can't breathe well in my house. A lot of rubbish happening. And when you see the Ministry of Environment bus driving, it goes out again. Operation continue. Hmm. The tank farms were situated there since 1999 till date. DPR licensing companies dangerous inflammable products to come and exist in a residential environment because they are foreign investors mm. without requiring that a prerequisite of fire, fire station, mm -hmm. you know, dualization of road, expansion of roads, you know, securing your people's welfare mm. happens every day. The whole of last week was crazy. I don't know how I made it to work. They took over the environment. So for you, you it's a reflection of what we've seen the government exactly. doing. Exactly. And I know why can will settle it, so let me not just say the reason I think is there. I know she's, I, I want to believe we are thinking alike. <laughs> but if we continue with this, looking at our own people as second class, mm. even in their in own country. land, that's why you have one person on my Twitter page since xenophobia happened in South Africa, leading a team of people, disturbing my Twitter page and justifying such killings. 
<laughs> no Nigerian would do that to a foreigner. It has never happened to foreigners here. The least that can happen is to be a government policy to say go back home. But that Nigerians would take cutlass and, ask, and, uh, and attack foreigners, I have not seen it in my own number of years. So I'm waiting to hear. We see them as God. So we protect um, our foreigners. We know we love foreigners. We are very accommodating people. But then there's this extreme I line of that negativity that. The reason for this is because we, we, have, we were colonized by mm -hmm. these people, mm -hmm. by the white people, mm -hmm. not the Chinese, mm -hmm. not the Indians, mm -hmm. by the white people. Now, when they colonized us, they subjugated us so much that it has become part of us to believe that they are better. You don't even know that you are doing it. Mm -mm. Subconscious. You know that if there is a um, yellow person on this, this thing, everybody will look towards the yellow person as, ah, mm -hmm. she's the most beautiful, she's the this. That is our subconscious telling us that lighter is better. better. Mm. Darker and is evil. In, in, and I don't want to go religious here, but I have to. The picture in the churches of Jesus Christ is a white man. Yes. Mm. It's true. Yeah. So when you look at the, the person that you are worshipping as your God is white. Mm. So uh, subconsciously, you don't even know that you are doing it. It is, uh, so, so, that, so subconsciously, that person is better than you. So anything that comes within that range of that color, whether it's Chinese, whether it's Indian, we, the Indian can be as black as you, he's still better because he has yes, the... Why can't you? While I agree, oh, I, I agree with that no, one. No, 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 let me finish. Let me finish because I, I know I don't want to go... God, she now spoke, I now face her. <laughs> the hair, we find that, that the hair, I too, to avoid this. is finer <laughs> because it's the hair of our masters. Mm. <laughs> no, they are masters. You know, and, and I'm not... I don't want to make it personal. I just want to explain why... Africans are like this, and it's not just in Nigeria. Mm. It's all over Africa. Yes. Mm. All yes. over Africa. Mm. Africans, because we were colonized by these people. Uh, look, there is this um, uh, documentary by Shukpo Shashore that I've been watching. Mm. Yes. If you see the way yes. they, 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 they treated black people. Mm. They, do you know that a, 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 a Nigerian lecturer came on that show to say, we deserved, we, it, it was better for us. Mm to be colonized by these people. I looked at him, and he's a historian, and he's a professor. Hmm. And I said, what? How far this thing has gone? But YK, YK, what? YK, YK, honestly, I totally agree with you. It's, it's a bit uncomfortable for me to admit, because it is really, really like deep-seated. It yes. We're not conscious of it, okay. but we gravitate towards the lighter skin. Mm. However, on the streets of Lagos, it's usually economical. When they see a white person, they see the idea that this person has money. money. Mm -hmm. So it is the monetary value the person represents mm -hmm. that they are deferring to that. No, if I hail this person, the security mm -hmm. official knows that if I hail you, the kind of money it would drop mm -hmm. would be of a no, higher value. Let's I disagree with in you. Not necessarily. Perspective. Not necessarily. Yes. Nigerians largely are very accommodating people. Mm -hmm. Very accommodating. Africans. And, and African, no. No, when we well, speaking, it, let's bring it, it, bring it Let's bring it home. Mm. Because I want that person, I know he watches the show and likes to come on my Twitter page. The history has shown that we're very accommodating people. Mm -hmm. And the whites who came to colonize us, first of all, took advantage of that accommodating spirit. Yes. Yes. That's the first thing. Exactly. Aside exactly. from the fact that, you know, eventually, through, through subtle education, they tried to give us a level of uh, consciousness that, you know, they were superior by telling us everything that schooling in England and, of course, going abroad and everything mm, was, made, was made to be better. Unfortunately, till today, some people will tell you, no, if my wedding gown is not from Kimiko, it ha, can't be my wedding gown. There. No, hold on a minute. <laughs> as in, a I, 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 I remember, a major I remember my wedding time. My elder sister had married in a ball gown, and I was wondering, what was the use of a ball gown? We are Africans. So when it was my turn, and I was like, no, just give me one, I buy and a double jaw wrapper. I want to be like my... People thought I was crazy. I always wondered why he didn't appeal to everybody, because mm -hmm. he, I was alone on that stand. Mm -hmm. You, it was, you, you were trying to convince everybody that, okay, well, initially, my, eventually my stubbornness had to just, well, she no go change and just leave and make she tie a rapper. Because that's what worked for me. Mm. So I don't understand how, this, but this thing has such, just, like I said, it's, it's not subconscious. Mm. We will not let it go. No matter and how even when you went to rebel, Nigerian rebel is, against it, people will tell you, no, yeah, be yes, white. You're not supposed to be yeah. rebel. You're supposed to be the one establishing. No. Mm. But now you're, you're now a rebel because we'll a lot of people are against now. it. We'll go on a quick break now. When we return, we'll take home. I know that a lot of our live audience people are itching to talk. I'll come straight to you after this short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Welcome back to Your View. The conversation behind the scene has been off, you know, <laughs> but we're, 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 we're keeping it calm, we're keeping it calm. Mm -hmm. It is a major issue and we're going to address it. Uh, so I'm still expecting phone calls. Are Nigerians, Nigerians here, do you feel that the country is prioritizing foreigners and taking care of foreigners more than its citizens? So we have a comment from our audience. Okay, good morning. My name is Marvelous. What I would like to say, based on the issue, is my problem is that even whites now, you see them come from their country. Mm -hmm. Those that don't even have a degree or nothing, mm -hmm. they come here and they become expatriates. Like they give them better jobs yes, than major engineers. Mm -hmm. But Jamia raised this motion in the house and he was deeply concerned about it. He said, if you look at major companies now, people want to em employ whites. Mm -hmm. Like they want whites to be their uh, leaders and their. Saying, and I look at it that there are people that have this qualification in Nigeria. Can't you put them there? Yes, we know that the whites are qualified. They are qualified people that are white. But put uh, blacks too. Employ them in your companies too. As Make a policy. Them, yeah, yeah. They they yeah, should put a policy. The they policy. should work on a policy that will employ more black people. The best restaurants in Nigeria, the best hotels, the best luxury Managed centers are occupied by whites. Yes. We in our country, we can't even go to Sheraton and eat mm. in our own country. That one is not their fault. It's, it's you that's do a lot of money. government has made it so bad that you even see security operatives mm. carrying umbrellas for them, carrying their mm. wife's handbag. And you'll be like, ah, in this same country that we are, and they don't even care about you. Look at the protests that happened. Mm. If, in, uh, they were complaining about xenophobia in South Africa. Mm. Their police is killing us. Even in Nigeria again, police still killed Nigerians that were protesting. What mm. is what is happening? We should really look in depth. Mm. This is a very big issue. So let's take this <laughs> good contribution. Good question. Thank you, you know, Marvelous. We take a quick call. Just to help you, there are some big, big projects that government does, you know, like uh, Eco Atlantic or all these things. Is on your body, bring go. Before. Is on your body. They don't even go and check whether their own people are qualified for the well, job. Okay, someone is calling us all the way from Abuja. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Wisdom, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, go ahead with your contribution. Um, if you want to get the truth, because you know the truth. Oh, your voice is better. Ah. Hmm. How, sir? Yeah. So if you want to hear the truth, because you know the truth, oh, your voice is better. How, sir? What is happening to democracy? Buhari doesn't have certificate. I took it from Cameroon. So much confusion. What's happening to your police? The police is not well organized. Hmm. <laughs> Wisdom, that's people your like wisdom opinion. And we have a lot of people like Wisdom. No, no, you see, Thank you for it, your contributions it, 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 to the show. View, mm. But it is part of the colonization. Mm. That is why his view. You can't criticize But our leaders him. have not made it better. What did he just say? I, 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 but I think. based on what he said, if, yes. if, 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 if you listen to his side of the story, too, you would wonder that if they are not better, why have we not been able in over 50 years of governing ourselves be able to do provide basic amenities you, for ourselves? Uh, uh, you see, I don't want you to keep on... Uh, talking ourselves down. Yes, I do. It, because when we keep on talking ourselves down, we will never progress. Mm. The reason is this. Remember I said it's from subconscious. You, it's not your DNA, it's your subconscious. You don't even know mm. that you're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it. it. Even your government are doing it. They don't know that they're doing exactly. it. Exactly. Now, when, if you watch that Chukos, Chukos, Chukos documentary, okay. you will see how they uh, amalgamated People who are not even supposed to be together, mm -hmm. they make us work. And if we start valuing ourselves, we would get better. That might also be a key to it. Because mm -hmm. if, if from our leaders, if as individuals, we start valuing the value that we have as citizens, our culture, our heritage, we will start let's, seeing, let's but let's maybe we'll be seeing better development in our society. Let's take this um, contribution from our audience. Please, okay. and then we'll take Good morning. This. My name is Abib. Um, I've worked with them, and I've had a lot of experience with you know, the Nigerians giving professional treatments to the whites than us. Now, but just last week, there is this one that happened last week. I had issues with my bank account, so I went to the bank. So after resolving the issue, immediately I stepped out from the bank. It started raining just last week, last week Tuesday. It was raining heavily. So some people were looking for a place to hide. So some of them were coming towards the bank. But the, there's a security there. So this security man was looking at, there are many Nigerians coming in, mm. but he, he had an umbrella with him. He didn't do anything. But immediately he cited two white men. Mm. You know, he quickly took the umbrella and started running towards them. So I helped them in. Into the wow. Bank. And I was like, I was so disappointed. I was hmm. like, why such a preferential treatment? I don't that's know about when money. that is going that's to That's about stop. money, though. That's, a, that's, that's economical. No, that's no, no, no. I don't think, I don't think it's about, about, about money. Because Let's I know take that's... this phone call. Balogu calling from Egbeda. Yes. Welcome to the morning. show. Good morning. Morning. 
Habit Billy. Good morning. Good uh, morning. I went down for the good doctor. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You see, uh, to me, what I see about the matter is this. Many people have that insurgency complaint on them. Mm. This issue, me and some of my friends even discussed about yesterday. Mm. But to me, personally, I so much believe in myself and believe in we black that we go people. In fact, I so much believe we even have senses more than them. <coughs> we can even do greater things more than them. Because their blood is not quite different from we, from our blood. So to me, uh, the problem comes from our leaders. Because you can see, if anything happens to all these uh, ministers, that's why they fly them to America or UK. Their children is schools in UK or America. Mm. But to me, I'm in Nigeria and I so much love Nigeria. Mm. So to me, the book people are not different from we at all in any circumstances. Mm -hmm. If you go through history, we have been doing excellent in many things more than that. I'm telling you. Why, unfortunately, that I don't have my big phone with me, I will have drink so many things that we have done greater than them. So it's mm -hmm. only foolish people in Nigeria that live in Bunibo that we plan. So that's it. Thank you, Balogun. So I, for me, it's not about money because if you work with a typical white man, they don't dash money. They don't understand why you have to dash people money. They don't give, they don't throw money around. Or let's say, for instance, the security man, you know, takes their bag and everything and they drop money. They don't do that. It's not about money. The thing for me is the fact that because our psychology has been raped, we find it difficult to see anything good amongst us. It's more like a sea finish. You are like me. And because we do not take our time, to learn our skills, to be excellent in what we do. It's very difficult to get to certain positions and deliver well, because the truth is, when you compare the job a typical, even the, the low class outside the country will do for you, compared to what a Nigerian will do, not because a Nigerian will not do it well, but because the Nigerians want to cut corners and make more money, the greed is our problem. And so they will cut corners and eat your money, and then you don't see the job as fantastic as you will get that of a white man. So we need to look, yes, we need to look inwards and determine for ourselves that we are people who are strong, we are intelligent, we are smart. When we have a conducive environment, we will work. We will put in the best. Excellence is what we need. That's it. I agree, but I want to decide. Uh, you know, why can I know that you've been talking about the strength of our identity that if yeah. we can if we if we know ourselves we, we will are. be able to appreciate ourselves but we have we are confused. We don't have an identity. And yeah, that's this, this, part of the oh, problem. Oh, oh, orientation. Oh, oh, oh. Orientation is our problem. Mm. Is, and you see, I, you can you can blame the government. The is, they are to blame because they are the teachers, mm. right? Mm. But they are the same. They have the same mindset. Are allowed to continue to re bre keep bringing it up because we need to get to the point where we would value what we have mm -hmm. above what we see all, um, the white people having. And to a large extent, I, I used to be on the table where I used to think I, I would never do wigs. So I appreciate you saying it, and I think that we mustn't give up when we uh, when we see what we feel is a good value to Nigerians. Let mm -hmm. us keep emphasizing keep talking it. Talking about it. Um, Nigerians are honest. Nigerians are hardworking. Mm -hmm. Value your natural hair. Keep saying it. Don't yeah. give up, please. It might take me the next one year before I will go back to having my natural hair the way I used to. YK, but Thank you wasn't for give up. Talk about YK for bringing it again. Mm. But let me quickly just take over to look down the street. Nigerians, prior to whites coming, mm -hmm. we could put our goat here and pick it up the next morning. Mm. We, we, we had strong traditional customary laws for crime, mm -hmm. strong traditional customary laws for. For all sort of offenses, we could we could ostracize the person we dealt with our own crimes ourselves. When they came, they brought some laws that you know will favor them. The the all the system, all the institutions were for to ensure that they ruled, that they ruled. So the pol police that you're seeing today is still the same mentality. Mm. They are only for whoever is leading. They are not for the people, which is supposed to be this. That's they supposed to be the different police thing. now. And then when military came and started to make money, flying everywhere, everything became about money. Mm. It was never like that. We built this country <coughs> where we didn't have oil. And now since we've had oil, how far have we gone mm. compared to where we're coming from? Mm. So that wasn't us. That was who we were made to become. Mm. If we go back to how our parents were, our forebears were, 
we see that you know we have a proper Nima. Uh, 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 we have Nima, when I was growing Model up, when I was growing up, do you know that? All these high walls did not exist. Mm. When everybody, everybody's work no on it, uh, mm. it did, they did not exist. Really uh, everything was low, we, over everything, low walls. We all, you could jump over your wall and yeah, you would sleep in the night. Mm. There was nothing like armed robbery. When I was growing up, nothing like armed robbery. Mm. The only, you could have burglars. Burglars would come and steal your money or your, mm -hmm. we didn't have mobile phone in those days or something, sha. But, but never, the more, you did not feel, why threatened? Yeah. You did not feel threatened. I think that the, the things keep going bad the more we lose our identity. Yes, and the closer we get to identity. knowing who we are, mm -hmm. the, the stronger better. we would be as individuals and as a country. So we must embrace our identity to. as a nation. Toby Olowo says, we taught them how to treat us because we place them as directors in multinationals and top officials when we have better qualified people here mm. in the country. No, but they own the companies. Mm -hmm. Those That's days. what we can take on the show today. That's what we can take on this topic. We will never stop talking about it. We will bring it back Maybe again. Can talk now. I know, I know, <laughs> but we want to discuss something else. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll discuss combating fire occurrence in the Ember Month. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. You guys, you have no idea what's going on behind the scene. Honestly, it's been heated. Why well, is one of the major causes of accidents during the ember months? Because of the air becomes drier, thus encouraging a chain reaction of fires. Recently, there was an incident of fire at the Unity Bank um, head, of, head office. So joining us, we have on the show the CEO of Safety Expert with, a 20 year of with 20 years experience in working with London Fire Service, Debbie Windell, will be joining us to discuss how we can protect ourselves from fire outbreak. A round of applause for her now. 20 years. Join the conversation, please, by calling us on 070-8066-8014. It's on the screen. Or you could tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag your view. So we're doing a switch from the heated topic into <laughs> this one. Let's calm down. Let's calm down. You will not take to it. Yes, as we're going into the ember months, we're already, already in the ember months, and mm -hmm. as the weather gets drier, there's usually occurrence of more fire outbreak. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted you to discuss. But before I engage you on that, we have loads of tweets on the previous topic, and I want us to just take a few of them. So, <coughs> Obiajulu. Yes, so uh, Mr. Debayo says, we have the best hands and respected all over the world, the same way we respect whites and expatriates in Nigeria. If you hone your onions and know what you do, people will respect you and accord you that space. We are the best. Gala says, I used to feel some respect for the white people before I traveled out. The average white man is a poor man, but comfortable with the good things their governments put on ground, like real good roads, etc. Most of them will pay back credit till they die. Mm. I mean, Hassan says, obviously, they are, all not, they are not all self-centered like the blacks. Nigerians have gone far under them no matter what. So I'll take just one comment. Gala okay. says, sorry, I used to feel some respect okay, for the white okay. people before I, I traveled out. Oh, sorry. Mm. I'll, quick, I'll take one quick comment from this. Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't have much time, but I'll take your comments, please. Say what you want to say, quickly. Okay. I used to, my, my father used to say something, mm. and I do hear it from a lot of people. Mm. They will say, Beke, Wabara, Amiibo. And I do contend with that. I do tell them that anything a white man or anybody can do, you are a black skin guy. You can do it. We only need to be trained to read, to think. Mm. You will do it. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, as in, it's deep rooted in our psyche, but I myself have like reversed it, you understand? Mm. Because I know that black and Nigerians are one of the most intelligent people. In the world. When we go out there and we compete with them in Nigerian, I mean, universities like Harvard and the rest of them, you see that Nigerians come top in their class, as in mm -hmm. best in class. Mm -hmm. think? So we so, have capacity. Yes. We do have capacity. So we need to just start believing in ourselves again. I believe in myself. Reading and thinking. So Thank you. So, Ma, um, how do we, bringing it back to the fire outbreak and the fire incidents and the issues that conf confront us, 
where we are not preparing for the changes that our environment would have. Like, whether we like it or not, the air would get drier and things like fire would happen. So what do you think we can do as Nigerians to start preparing ourselves for this time of the year where these things happen? Okay. Thank you very much, guys, for having me. And you'd like to excuse my voice. I had a conference on fire yesterday, oh. so my voice is actually gone. Okay, um, as we're entering the Ember months, we need to really get prepared in terms of, um, you said it actually that um, everywhere will be dry mm. and um, there'll be a lot of dust gathering mm. around as well. But as we go in, we're going to be doing a lot of cooking. Mm. For the ladies that do a lot of cooking in their kitchen, mm. we need to be make sure that the children don't mm. stay in the kitchen with us and make sure that all appliances that we're using <coughs> in the kitchen is not left unattended. Mm. We must stay with our kitchen appliances. When we're doing our, cook our cooking, we must try and have our mobile phones must be away from where we're cooking. Leave your mobile phone in your living room and do your cooking while you're there. So that's one. A lot of us actually mm. do I don't cooking do. <laughs> while we're on the phone and then you have the gas burning at the same time. Is that dangerous? It is very dangerous. You mustn't have your mobile phone because there could be a reaction from that phone. It's like people going to the generator sets as well, running their generator and then taking their small, all them um, touch light um, phones, mm. using mm. to actually on this generator. Mm. You couldn't, you shouldn't do things like that. Oh, wow. And even in the filling station, yeah? Exactly, they, in the filling stations as well, you have to put using it. In the UK where I trained, you're not allowed to use mobile phones at the filling station and everybody knows. So for Nigeria, I think it's a lot of, we need to create a lot of awareness, mm. you know. Nigerians, we're sensible people and we want to learn. But if you don't tell them about it, how are they going to know? Well, mm. Your experience 20 years in the UK is, yes. is, is very commendable. Okay. And comparing the fire service in the UK and what presently fire service is in Nigeria, how would you say? <laughs> okay. If I'm going to be honest with you, I'll take Lagos as um, a base. Lagos is actually doing a lot of work. They're ahead of everything in the nation in terms of the states. If we look at the states, I'm not talking of the federal, federal. now. Mm -hmm. I'm talking of Lagos as a whole. Lagos is actually ahead and they're doing very, very well. Their response time to incidents, it's very, very good. Very, extremely good compared to other research that I've actually carried out. But going back to this awareness as well, like what I said at the conference yesterday, Nigerians need to understand that for um, our officers, our operational officers to do their job effectively, please, please respect their sirens. Mm. Respect their sirens, please. If you see their flashing lights, please one, move. But we don't so believe it's like the, 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 the No, is it the government service. people that are... Not, not no, the fire, fire, the fire service. The fire because service, you know, the uh, they're always doing wapun, no. all those... I know some people <laughs> actually abuse it. Mm -hmm. But if you see the red fire engines, you see them, you know their fire engines. They're there going to emergency. Operation. There's okay. an emergency. Like, for example, okay. the Unity Bank that you talked about that mm -hmm. happened on the VI, it was on the eve of the fire conference that we organized yesterday for Lagos State. At the end of the day, please, please, Nigerians, Respect them, let them get, because if they don't, if you don't respect them, it would affect their response time. Hmm. They're not going to get to that incident hmm. on time. So hmm. I, I'm more concerned about the trucks that fall on the road, and then we see Nigerians going to scoop fuel. Is there a way to, you know, the like, yeah, the tankers, you know, f is there a way to sensitize the people? on how that is even very dangerous. And I know that people are poor and people want to survive and once they see an opportunity, they want to make something out of it. Mm. And also the tr um, tanker drivers, is there any way that they can you know, learn about this emergency in case what is needed to do and just to be able to make it safe for people and themselves? Okay, we had the Federal Road Safety on the conference yesterday at the hotels and um, they actually spoke about these problems okay. in terms of Nigerians, like the Ijegun incident that yes. happened some months back. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people lost their lives there. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, there is, we don't really have any kind of like, um, um, how am I gonna say it? We don't really have provisions on how to treat like the burns patients, people who have lost their homes from things like that. So we actually spoke with the Federal Road Safety that they need to do more in terms of sensitization to let people know that when there, there's an incident, you don't need to go there and start using your mobile mm. phone and start recording. No, in the UK, if there's an incident like that, the citizens know that they must be far 
from the, from the from place, there, and that reduces sea. mortality rate exactly, if it catches fire. Exactly. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried. That I, that I, I'm hoping that your organization may be able to get some change because we've had this happen back to back, and it's yes. as if it only happens in Africa. So what can we do innovatively to reduce occurrence of fire outbreak related to trucks that are con con um, conveying fuel? How is it? Is there? Is there some innovative ways we can use to do this, aside from, we know train would be better, if we had the pipelines would be better, but maybe there's a way we can construct the vehicles that carry this fuel, that if it tips over, it doesn't pour out. Are we, are we did you have that kind of discussion during the conference? Um, what we talked about was the fact that most of these drivers, number one, they have to be registered drivers. They okay. cannot just pick anyone on the street mm. and then just give them an articulated vehicle mm. carrying a time bomb. Because mm. as far as I'm concerned, what they're carrying is time Thank bomb. You. Mm. So they need, we actually spoke with FRSC yesterday, but they're saying that the drivers, they're, they're not underage, but we're saying that they look young. And they're yeah. tired. Yes, and they're tired. So we're mm. saying that if you have to carry this time bomb, there has to be a time of the day where maybe the roads are calm, Mm. There isn't you and I on the roads mm. at that time. You know, maybe they move from maybe um, 10 o'clock till 2 a.m. Mm. or 3 a.m. or something But, but like you that. know, fi fire is something that, you know, is timeless. It can happen anytime. Anywhere. So let's, let's, let's talk about how ready are fire services within, even in Lagos, as much as they are working, and not as close to the people as they should be. Mm. Yes. That's one reality. And in those areas, for instance, where I live in Jegu Egbade, where the tank farms are everywhere, we do not have any active fire service. And I don't know whether DPR is now regulating the provision of um, fire safety materials within those tank farms enough for us to even protect the citizens because they brought this to a residential area. So how close are they to the people in, and expect, uh, expectance of any of these um, you know, accidents that can happen from the inflammables they're carrying around? Okay, one of the mandates that actually have coming back to Nigeria from the UK is to try and reduce fire incidents in Nigeria. And I believe I started off by doing the very first fire safety conference and awareness in 2017. And this is the second one that we're doing now. And it's more to do with that, like what you said about creating a lot of awareness. And one of the things I said, which was published this morning, in one of the newspapers is that Lagos, we have a lot of population over, I don't know if in the 20 million or so, mm. we don't have enough fire stations. Mm. And I said, there is a need to build more fire stations. Very, very I gave important. an example of Ikorodu And it must road. have water. It should be an emergency yes. as a matter of fact. Yeah, I gave an example of Ikorodu Road. I think there's one under the bridge on Ikorodu Road. If, I, if an incident should happen on the other side, they will have to turn to, mm -hmm. to get there. In the traffic. And Thank you. The time in between is a life a and death of, mm. situation. So for me personally, what I said at the conference yesterday is that Lagos State government, Lagos State as a whole, need to look at the billet structure mm. and then try and create fire station within every community. Mm. They need to invest in that to protect <laughs> our citizens. Is there mm. any way um, buildings would be properly, you know, monitored. Town planning. Oh, yes, because I don't really know what is being planned. Sometimes you just drop that paper and they sign and go. So we know we have a lot of buildings, especially uh, commercial, exits. yes. There are no extra exits in such buildings. They don't have the fire extinguishers mm -hmm. and all of that. If anything happens, there's a dilemma already. So is there any way you guys can go in, even in residential areas as well, to be sure that you are fire protected? Okay. For, res for residential um, homes in, the U in Nigeria, we can't, I mean, I don't know about, laps, um, I think the agency that deals with um, building mm -hmm. in Nigeria is, um, in Lagos, is LAPSCA, mm -hmm. the Lagos Building Control. However, there are a lot of, um, the way the agencies work in Nigeria is totally different from where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. If you apply as a person that you want to build a 10 bedroom house, for commercial purposes, you would apply to building control and sending your plans. Building control will automatically send it out to fire service. Mm. So we, yes, so we will do our base, looking at the fire exits that you have in place, if the fire safety operates. arrangements hmm. that you have in place. Hmm. They will send it to the water section. Hmm. The water section will look at the water that needs to go in into. So electricity as well, we do their base as well. So everybody comes together as a whole. Before you get to the Telecommunication as well, before. Because my daughter just 
um, they just built their house, you know, and made an extension. And they had to, the amount of <laughs> documents they had to sign. Yes. And then they now even had to take permission from their neighbors. Yes, exactly. Before yes. building that extension. Before yes. they could build oh, the wow. extension. So it's not such an organized society. But we have it in Nigeria. In Lagos. We have all the agencies. It's just that we need to work Money. together. Get, true. Uh, we very need to work true. together. It's there. Mm. I didn't know they were all there until I started. If I want to build an extension to my house, I just build it. Just Nobody build your thing. Nobody's <laughs> asking you. Let's take yeah. this phone call. Dele, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Please give your your life. Go ahead with your contribution. Welcome to the show. Um, I'm going to contribute about the issue of previous topic. Uh, the discrimination, or let me say, it's just called for the white, white. You know what I'm saying? It's not particular to to Nigeria alone. Oh, okay. It is black. Mm. Black generally, once you are black, you give your support to the white. Mm. If not, like a Catholic, you try to emulate or to do his own, or to change his color, to change his color and sort of his skin. You know what I'm saying? Apart from that, both politically, mentally, economically, they go over time as soon as they are more than the black. Mm. Why, are we, why, are we, why are we rushing to their land? That's the place I know. And they are fooling over time. When they come here, they, come, they don't come here to come and be slaves. They come and do many jobs. They come here to come and, to come and become Great. the boss mm. of a company. Mm. Then we go over there, we run mm. these people there, we run there. Mm. All those things contribute to this. Uh, identity. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Dele, for your contribution. Back to the fire issue. Um, you know, we were, t you, you were, we started by talking about Ember Months and um, how a lot of cooking take place. And then you've educated us a bit about not having our phones in the kitchen. That for me, I, I'm sure I've read it somewhere, but I'm not we effectively practicing it. Mm. My phone's still going to the kitchen, so I think I'm going to work on that. But what are the other things that we can do um, in our homes to prevent a fire outbreak. Okay. Like we said, we're going into the Ember months. We're all going to be using Christmas trees. So if we have to use Christmas trees, make sure that the lightings that you use on your Christmas trees are bought from a recognized supplier. Uh. Don't just buy it off the streets because of the electrical wiring in it. Oh, it wow. can catch fire. So don't about using old, old ones. Okay? No, you can use old ones so long as they're still intact mm -hmm. check all the wirings mm. make sure that they're not split in any way mm. and they're still fine to use Ooh. yeah but do not buy them just don't off the patch road. together don't patch together with tape and all of that make sure that you do wiring and then when you're going to bed at night make sure you switch it off Ooh. your christmas lights mm. never never go to bed with yeah. license lights i mean i used to leave my own no, no. please turn it off i use to yes. celebrate christmas no, no, but she's she, festive season, light everywhere. Yes. Unless you're using lights. the battery one. Festive. There are the battery operated no, ones. The electricity ones. Uh, yes, so always turn it off. Uh, that's and, yes, good when information. You're, when you're going to bed at night. Let's talk about uh, those who have their cylinders within the kitchen. kitchen. Yes. I always advise people, do not put your cylinders in your kitchen. Have it outside. Go and buy one of those long hose mm -hmm. and then pass it through. Even if you live on 10th floor, buy enough hose. To pass it through downstairs. Oh, it shouldn't it's be safe. upstairs. Mine it should never outside, be inside. But, oh, mine inside is the outside, house. but on, on the, the balcony. balcony. It's fine. It's, okay. it's going off air. Okay. So long as it's going off air oh. to breathe, that's fine. But do not have it within inside. inside. And another thing I'm going to advise. Some build boxes for them. So outside. We, yes. Mm, is the that okay? Yes, a metal mm. box outside. Mm, a wooden yes. box. Metal is safer than wood. Because okay. it would easily be born flammable yes. fast. Let's take this call. Let's take this call. Femi just called in all the way from London, mm. apparently. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hello, hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I would um, definitely love to contribute to what you guys are talking about this morning. Okay, go ahead, As please. Regarding the, um, the white man mentality in Nigeria mm. and then the fire safety mm. issue in Nigeria. Please make it fast. Um, okay, thank you for what you said. I love what you said, and I'm really thank you. in support of you. We thank have you. a bad white man mentality that if a white man doesn't beat, 
we will not be able to do anything. Mm. Personally, myself, I have been able to send the narrative because I've been dealing with security training in Nigeria, mm. and I have refused to bring any white man to mm. support that. Wow. That is one. Then secondly, the issue of the fire safety, a lot of security companies, a lot of establishments in Nigeria don't even have any fire safety regulations at all. Mm. There is nothing like fire safety weekly check. There is no drill, no training, mm. no awareness, nothing whatsoever. If we're actually talking about this, the, uh, the Road Safety Commission must be really, really in this to make sure that every single vehicle flying our Nigerian roads have fully fire safety in motion with the Nigerian according to the law that we have, in a way, I don't know how to put it, including CBC as well. Thank you so much. Wendy, thank you, thank you for contributing to this. Thank I you, love Femi. So much. Thanks for making us the Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you, Femi. Um, TVC is very compliant, though. Don't bother. We, we do fire drills and we have all the fire. We have fire exits. We do fire drills here. We have fire exits. We have an alarm that rings sometimes randomly and we run outside and realize it was a fire drill. So, um, but I think we, that we need to have our, all the government agencies for doing their best mm -hmm. to update because we have the laws. It's just that it's not being enforced. Mm -hmm. And I hope you've all learned something today, especially our live audience. So you can, you must ensure you put your gas outside. I will. I promise so I haven't done that. I won't take my phone in the kitchen anymore. How do you do your cooking I won't videos? do video of my cooking anymore. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I'm not lying. Right, Oh, like in the kitchen. Get a smoke the detector, the smoke detector no, the, if you can. The, the kitchen one is the carbon monoxide detector. Yes. Okay. Which is I need to, smell we need to go. We're out of time. Yes. Totally out of time. Thank you, Yemi Legend, for our small chops today. <laughs> Thanks, Cream Slices, for our cake. Thanks, TBA Services, the distributor of rights food for our water and our drinks. We appreciate you all. Thanks to our live audience for coming. We'll see you guys next week. And we'll see you audience tomorrow. Bye.